Amen. That's what the church is for. Amen. Just like Brother Jeremy said, amen, church, it means a called out people. It's an assembly. It's a people that's called out. I mean, it's called out tonight. Amen. It ain't because you come to Hanging Rock Church. It's because you've been called out. I've been called out. Amen. I'm glad God called me out of sin. I mean, he's glad he called you out. Amen. Brought you out of darkness and brought you into the, to his kingdom. Amen. You know, when Jesus come here, Amen. Now the Bible says many times in the first books of the gospel, he said, thank God, that, that many places he said that they came preaching that the kingdom of God yeah. was nigh to come, even at the door. Thank mm -hmm. God. Jesus preached the same message. Thank right. God that the kingdom of God was nigh. Amen. 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 A lot of people don't know what the kingdom of God is. Yeah. But it's the it's God's kingdom. It's yeah. his power. It's his glory. Amen. People make it up to be a lot of things. But I believe it's in the Romans. He said that the kingdom of God is, it's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I think. And we got to have, we need the Holy Ghost. And I know, thank God, that uh, I've read this probably, we've preached on this several times. If you go with me to John chapter 3 tonight, amen, we want to read scriptures that we've read several times, amen, preach on several times, but I'd just like to see something tonight. We've got to go farther than where we're at tonight. We're, we've not made our journey yet. We've not finished the, the, our, uh, our way. God's made a way for us. He said He was the way. And we've got made a start with Him, but we've got to go further than we are. Thank God. And, you know, people, sometimes people come and they're curious. I got tickled to, about the just saying a little boy pulled up there. Says, I'm just about guaranteed that little boy will be back. Amen, because he knows that you talk to him. Amen, and I'll tell you what, I believe the devil wants to know what you got to say. Thank God. And I, I, I hope he does. I, come, I hope he comes back to your door and knocks on the door. But in John chapter 3, verse 1, said so there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. In other words, he was a, he's a ruler. He was a religious leader. Amen. They took care of the law of God's work. Anyway, he said, And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except what? God be with him. In other words, he recognized this. He was a man. Amen. He was a ruler of the Jews. But, you know, he saw this. He said, you know what? I'm in my mind. I'm thinking all these things can't be what people, they're telling us it's the devil. And they're saying all kinds of things. But in his mind, he knew that there was something about it. So he went questioning him. And he said, thank God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How many see that? Amen. If you're not born again, you can't see the kingdom. Right. John preached and Jesus preached. Jesus, John said, I baptize you water. Said, he that cometh after me, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thank God we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of wild fire out. Amen. But I'll tell you, we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you've made a start, you've repented of your sin, you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're well on your way. But you need to go on and get the Holy Ghost. You've got to have it, children. Amen. You can't make it without it tonight. And I know I'm, that might be strong, and I ain't trying to hurt nobody or discourage nobody, but Jesus came and made a way. He started the way, but He had to finish what He started. Amen. All that He done when He got to the cross and He'd give up... And and he quit, it would all have been a loss. Everything wouldn't have counted for anything. If we just go part of the way, it's not going to count for nothing. We got to go all the way. And we got to not only be born again, amen, but we got to let God lead us and guide us in our life. There's got to be a change in our life, thank God. And we got to bring forth fruit. But he went on and he said, And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? In other words, that was a good question, wasn't it? You might ask that tonight. I'm an old person. How can I be born again? I'm, I've made it all these years. And he said, and he said, uh, and he can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Some people are teaching that. 
Some people will teach when you're born again, the first time you're born is when you're born in your mother's womb. But he wasn't talking about that, or Jesus wouldn't have told him this. Nicodemus was telling him, hey, I'm an old man. If i got to be born again, how am I going to be born again? i got to go back and be born in my mother's womb. And this is what Jesus said to him. He said, Jesus answered and said, answered, Verily, verily, or surely, surely, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except yeah. a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And I know this is, my, this is a hard saying. But the thing about this, God has got a perfect way. He's got a way that He's established. And people have tried all kinds of ways to may say, well, you've got it. There's all kinds of prayers. Just, just receive the Lord in, in my heart. People say, well, I've received the Lord. Well, has the Lord received you. Yeah. I've had people get upset with me when they said, I received the Lord. Because I asked them, Brother Johnny, I said, has the Lord received you? Yeah. Amen. If He ain't received you according to the Word, then you don't have Him. Amen. Yeah. If you haven't spoken to tonight, children, you haven't got the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. It's for you tonight. And I'm not setting a trap for you, but I'm telling you, it's the same thing Jesus said when He walked on that earth. He said, you got to be born again. you got to be born of water and of the Spirit. As we go on, we read, thank God, how that they was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And, we were, and when they was baptized with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, this was a show to me and you that that was exactly what He was talking about. But that ain't where I'm going tonight. I just want to lay up a little bit of groundwork. If you go with me, thank God, to the 23rd chapter of the book of Luke tonight. Amen. Jesus was in the process of being crucified. Along the way, they got a man to help him to carry the cross. He'd lost so much blood, he was falling under the weight of it. Amen. And he needed he needed help. He couldn't carry the cross by himself. And there was a man there that they they took bid him to step in and help Jesus carry the cross. Amen. So when Jesus was dragging that old cross up the hill and the blood was around out of him, you know he was he was with every what step. It was all he had, Brother Johnny. I don't know about you. Sometimes I've been so tired, I just didn't think I could go another minute. Sometimes we might be so sick that we just don't think we're going to get through the last minute. Thank God. Some of us even come nigh the death's door. But Jesus was given it all. He'd come here and he'd been rejected of, of his people. He'd come here and laid down the plan. And this plan was laid down for me and you. And it's like I'll see you on the tabernacle there Wednesday night. Amen. Nobody he could get past that, that veil, thank God, because the veil was still standing in the doorway. The only one could go in was the high priest. But thank God, I'm glad that Jesus was that high priest. Uh, and when he hung on the cross, uh, it said that veil was rent from the top to the bottom. Uh, amen. And the way into the kingdom of God, it was made. But glory to God, if he hadn't gave his life, uh, if he hadn't shed his blood, thank God, it wouldn't nothing would have mattered, thank God. But as we read here in the 23rd chapter, of the book of Luke's gospel tonight. We're talking about Jesus when he was on his journey and he was carrying the cross. And I'm going to start somewhere about the 27th verse. Luke 23 and verse 27. And there followed him a great company of people. He didn't die by himself. Amen. There's a lot of people there following him. Amen. Not compared to the group that rejected him. I mean, everybody didn't reject him. The, the, the Pharisees, the religious world of that day, they rejected him. The Romans rejected him. But there was a lot of people that followed him, Brother Johnny. Amen. There's a lot of people that loved him. They stood at the cross and they weeped and watched him take his last breath. Thank God. And it's like I think about sometimes when, when we're taking communion and we're remembering the Lord's death. I see tears come down because we remember how he suffered and how he gave his life for us. Thank God. And they did. They were seeing it firsthand. They were seeing it with their eyes. And it said, And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed 
and lamented him. They was weeping and they was crying and there wasn't nothing they could do. Amen. Think about this. Amen. The Lord of heaven and walking stood among them. Thank God. Healed the sick. Opened the eyes of the blind. Every good thing that they'd ever experienced. But now they was watching him die. Thank God. Amen. Even his own disciples. Thank God. They had run and hid. Thank God. Because they was afraid. But you know what? Amen. He knew they was going to do that. He told them that they was going to do that beforehand. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what. Tonight, thank God, if we're not ready to meet God, there's going to be a day when you wish you had him. Amen. And I'll tell you what. Tonight, thank God, if you're messing around with the Lord and you're just playing with salvation tonight, there's going to be a time come when you're going to stand before Him and you're going to be in trouble with God. And it ain't going to be a group of grinning and bearing and saying, well, God will forget, thank God, because He's not going to be it. But this group of women and this great host of people was following Him and they was weeping and they was crying. But listen to what He told them. And Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, Amen. He said, Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Amen. Because he knew what was coming. Amen. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what's going to happen. You know what? The Lord told Peter one time, He said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. And said, He desires to sift you as wheat. He said, But I prayed for you. And he said, Brother, he said, When you're converted, He said, Strengthen the brother. I'll tell you what, there's a great war in front of us. There's a great journey that we've got to travel. Amen. When I went to, in, the, in the military, I had to go to boot camp, Brother Johnny. And I didn't like the things they made me do. Amen. They cut all my hair off and, and they give me new clothes to wear. I couldn't even wear the clothes I like no more. Amen. I couldn't wear nothing that I had. I had to change. I had to be turned around. Thank God I became a different person. I had to say yes, sir, and no, sir. Amen. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Amen. There wasn't no more foolishness. I, playing time was over with. And when I got in there, thank God, there was other men that was there just like me. But I couldn't go and do my job in the military military until they got me ready to go. And I'll tell you what, when you start out for the Lord, it's just like going to boot camp. Amen. You've got to start getting ready. God's got a work to do. Amen. The Bible said when Zion travails, she'll bring forth sons and daughters. But if we don't travail, and we won't bring forth no life. And I want you to know, he said tonight, he said, you got to be born again. Amen. you got to be born again. If you want to see the kingdom of God, you got to be born again. Not the way the world says. Not the way the preacher says come up and shake my hand and you'll be ready to go or come up and repeat the sinner's prayer after me and you'll be ready to go children that's not going to cut it tonight amen Jesus couldn't just walk up to the cross amen and say it's finished he had to finish the work that he had done, came to do he had to lay down his life and you're going to have to lay down your life today. amen people tell people they can live however they want to but I want you to think about this Jesus turning to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem. Was he talking to the men too? Yeah, yeah he was. He yeah. was talking to everybody. Yeah. He was talking about all of them that came forth from Abraham. Yeah. He was talking about his children. Those who can bring forth other children. You know, yeah. women can bring forth children. Amen. Men can't bring for it. I don't care. They can say what they want to. Amen. They can even make men women, 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 men. I don't know how they do all that. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what. God made us. Thank God the way He wanted us. He made a woman. Amen. A man carries a seed, but the woman, amen, she's the only one that can bear the child. And the church is a woman tonight. The bride of Christ. How many say amen? Now listen to what He said. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren. I want you to think about this for a minute. Uh, do you know what barren means? Barren means that you're not, you can't bear children. You can't bring forth life. Amen. When Adam and Eve came together, you know what God told them to do? 
He said, multiply the earth. They, they couldn't, he didn't want Eve to be barren. He wanted her to bring forth the children. The women that are born into this world to bring forth children. Amen. Now, I know some people that maybe can't have children. That's not the point I'm trying to get, but I'm trying to tell you in creation, that's the way God made it. He made man, a man after his image. He made woman after the image of man. And it was her job to bring forth children. Amen. The only way she could bring forth children is she has to go into labor. She has to go into her veil. And a lot of you sisters in here, you've bore children and you know, thank God, that it's not a playing thing, but it's serious. And when you come to that place, your body is changed all over. But there's the time, thank God. Listen, I want you to listen now. He said, blessed are the barren. That's what people say. Blessed are the barren. Blessed are the barren. Who's barren tonight? The church. The church, can't you see people sitting in the church and people not preaching to them about the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Not telling them they got to be born again. So if they're not born again, they can't bring forth life. Yeah. So they're barren, aren't they? Yeah. Amen. If I don't get up here and tell people that they need to be born again of the water and the Spirit, yeah. then I make people barren. If people yeah. go to a church where they just believe on the Lord and pat you on the back, you're barren. You yeah. can't bring forth. Yeah. Amen. If he said, if we can't bring forth, thank God we can't be his disciples. Yeah. He said, every tree in me that bringeth forth not fruit, he said it's going to be hewn down and cast into the fire. we got to be bringing forth fruit tonight. But the world's are saying barren, thank God. You're, if you're barren, that's blessed. Blessed is the barren. Listen, blessed are the barren and the wounds that never bear. In other words, and the paths that never gave suck. In other words, a woman, you know, she, she gives a, a milk to the children. Amen. That's, a, that's her paths. Amen. Her womb is for the child. And I'm just what I'm trying to say today, but we're living in a time where people are saying, you're blessed. Yeah. You're blessed. You're blessed. But if you're not, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you're not bare, if you're not born again, amen, then you're bare tonight. Yeah. Everybody say amen. 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 We have to grow in this. We've got to let the Holy Ghost lead us in God and say, God, I want, I want God to lead me. Amen. And I'll tell you what, I know when people are young and, and they first start, amen, you've got to seek the Lord. You've got to travail and, 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 and you're, you've got to die. This old body, of, well, they say when a woman has a child, she comes more close to death than any time because her body is going through so much. And sometimes when you're travailing with the Lord, you're going to go through trouble too because you're going to have to die out to this whole world so that the Lord can come in and we wonder about people years ago how they so many people could get the Holy Ghost but in the time that we're living in people don't know nothing about Holy Ghost people don't know how to live they don't have morals they don't have values amen I've been in places uh, and tried to preach funerals brother Johnny and look back through the crowd and I'd say Lord where do I even start amen these people are so they don't even know nothing about you they don't I look how they're dressed I, Amen. Look how they live. They don't they don't regard you even your work. How can I tell them that they need you? And why can I tell them to change? Yeah. Because there's so much that needs to change. Yeah. And our society is getting worse and worse yeah. every day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Years ago we had morals. Amen. When we went to school, amen. But as time is when every year it gets worse and worse. Yeah. Men are waxing worse and worse. And that means that things in the church are worse and worse. Yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you tonight, you've got to live a holy life. Yeah. If you want the Holy Ghost tonight, God is going to come in a holy vessel. You've got to sanctify yourself and separate yourself from the world. You can't keep holding on to the things of the world. Amen. Because you will get the Holy Ghost. Right. You've right. got to give it up. Right. You know what's got to change everything? Yep. Your attitude has got to change. Yep. The atmosphere, the places you go, the things you do, how you dress, yep. thank God, the way you talk to people, yep. how you talk to your children, how you relate to your parents. All the things has got to change in your life. Yep. Amen. And, and Jesus said, you got to be born again. To be born again, amen, we got to be changed. He said, men as newborn babes desire the sincere of milk of the Word and we may grow thereby. Amen. We've got to have we got to have milk to drink. Amen. We need meat yeah. so we can grow. Think about how many sanctuaries across the country that's bare. Mm -hmm. You know, when Joshua divided up the land of Canaan between the tribes, every one of them, when I've taught on this in our Bible studies, amen, you ought to come to Bible study, amen, it's important. Yeah. Amen, but... They got a bigger plot of ground if they had more people. 
Amen. So if they was more fruitful and they had more children, they got a bigger plot of ground. They got a bigger inheritance. Thank God. You want a bigger inheritance tonight, you've got to bring forth fruit. Amen. Just like I've said many times, if the church is barren, if it ain't bringing forth fruit, if children ain't being born into the kingdom, amen, then God, if we're barren, we're not going to be able to bring forth any fruit. How many believe that tonight? If we're faithful to the church, we come to church and we worship God, God is going to bless the church. Amen. We can kick out the tent pegs. We can make. We can stretch out our curtains and, and make it broad. Thank God. Make room for others to come in. But if we're not faithful to it ourselves, then thank God ain't able to do no good to bring people in. God's not going to bring people where they're not able to take care of. I know we got a lot of young folks. It's just starting. A lot have been on the way. A lot of you seeking the Holy Ghost. And I'm not trying to discourage you tonight, but I'm just trying to push you on a little farther. Amen. Because it's important that you have it. Thank God. As you go through this life, you might not always have the preacher. Amen. You might not always have somebody that can really deliver the truth to you, but you're going to have to have something to lead you and guide you. And he said, we have an unction from the Holy One. Amen. He said, and he didn't say this, thank God, but he said, I say this, that you need not that any man teach you. He he wouldn't tell you didn't need anybody to preach to you. But he said, but the anointing which you have received, it abides in you and it will lead you and guide you. The Bible said the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in all truth and righteousness. Thank God. And truth is the word of God tonight and righteousness. But what about all these people that's just living all kind of ungodly lives and they say, i got the Holy Ghost. Amen. No, they don't. They don't have it. Amen. Amen. I know people are growing. People's got to learn to grow. And, yeah. and, and, but the thing about it is, they're not born again. Amen. Unless you do it the way they got born again in here. Amen. Like I said, if it's for you, go and get it. Amen. And that day when they asked him, said, men and brother, what shall we do? When the Holy Ghost came, when the baptism of the Holy Ghost came, and it filled the church, and they began to worship God and speak in tongues. And when they all stood and they questioned the apostles, he said, men and brother, what shall we do? Amen. And they said, they said that they all 11, all 12, all 11, that's only 11 then because Judas had fell, but all 11 of them stood up and said the same thing. Said, we quote this every morning, on Sunday morning, we do it so the kids will learn it. I want them to learn that. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise, that's the Holy Ghost, is to you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Holy Ghost is for you. It's for every one of you. The devil will try to cheat you out of it. He'll try to keep you from praying and from travailing and seeking God. He'll do everything to stand in your way. He'll put doubt in your way. He'll put people in your way. Thank God. But you've got to overcome them people. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to go up and pray every night. I'm going to pray till I get it. And you know what? I made that vow and I did every night. I went up and prayed. Some nights I felt like praying. Some nights I didn't. But I went and prayed anyway. And I kept praying. And I remember one time, just, just a night trying to be funny. But I remember, and I went up to pray. And all I could think about was old Ben Cartwright and, and, and that demands a show. That's all I could think about. And I'm thinking, Lord, this is awful. The devil say, here you're supposed to be a God. You're up here at the altar thinking about that stuff. You can't control what comes to your mind. But I found out... That I had to pray until I got past them foolish thoughts. All them foolish things that come to your mind, you got to press through those. You remember the blind man that sat by the side of the road? Amen. And he begged, uh, begged of Jesus. And he, and when Jesus, he heard that Jesus was coming by, he began to cry out, Oh, David, oh, oh da, 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 Jesus, son of David, ha, ha, come, thank God. Amen. He was calling out to him. Amen. And you know what? Even these disciples said, more or less told him to be quiet. Amen. They tried to hush him up. But you know what? The more they tried to hush him up, the more he cried out. The more he reached out. Thank God. He wanted to touch Jesus. And when Jesus heard him, he said, bring that man over here to me. And he said, what is it that you want, more or less? He said, that I can receive my sin. And he said, according to your faith. Amen. He went, but if he hadn't been calling out to Jesus, if he hadn't been seeking for Jesus and travailing to get where he was at, he would have never got his healing. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say tonight. The Holy Ghost is for everyone tonight. Amen. Righteousness is for everyone. Holiness is for everyone. But we've got to seek it and desire tonight. Amen. You know, he said, 
Blessed are the barren. Blessed are the barren. In other words, that's just like you look out and you see churches full of people that don't have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And you see all kind of natural works going on, but yeah. the work of God's not going on. And they're barren. Yeah. And people, what he's saying, there's going to be people, people's going to look at them and say, they're blessed. Mm -hmm. They're blessed to be barren. They're blessed, thank God, to be to where they don't bring forth any fruit. That's just like I was trying to get it across to the kids tonight. That we're all leaders. We're all examples. You younger adults, you, you're growing up to teach the younger people. If you sit back and rebel against God, amen, thank God you're teaching other people to be that yeah. way. And it would be an awful thing if you go to hell and then one of them small ones would be gnashing on you with their teeth because you'd showed them the wrong way. Yeah. Think about it. I've been in my mind. Just a, I don't know if you've ever seen dogs fight. I don't know if there's anything any vicious that's happened. Because when two dogs get in a fight, it's, it scares you to death. Amen. But they'll just be a tearing and gnashing yeah. on one another. And I think about in the Bible where it said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. And I'm just saying that people are so unfortunate to go to hell. When they get to hell, the Bible said they're going to be gnashing on one another with, in pain with one another. Amen. There will be no friends in hell. I've heard people say, well, I'll have plenty of company if I go there. There won't be no company. They're just going to be torment. Amen. I don't want to go there. I'm running for my life tonight because I'm afraid, thank God. Brother Johnny, and I'm afraid Jesus was hanging. He was going to the cross. His blood was running out on the ground. He said, don't weep for me. But he said, weep for yourselves and weep for your children. There's going to come a day when they're going to say, blessed is the barren and blessed are those that never gave son. You know, people can get a crowd together and they can get a song to go on and just get a crowd and a big pan of money. They don't care about people's lives. Amen. I tell you what, that's a lot of people. They just want to have somebody follow them. Yeah. They want a crowd. Yeah. Amen. They don't care about the people. No, yeah. Amen. But Jesus cared about the people. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to hear this next verse. At this time, he said, when they say blessed is a bear, blessed is a nose that never bear. In other words, they never brought forth, never brought forth life. Amen. And the paps which never gave son, they never nursed a child. Amen. How many of you live to the Lord? How many people have you led to the Lord in your life? Amen. I'll tell you what, I don't know how many I've led. I've been preaching the gospel and I, I hope somebody's on my on my on my docket that I've led. But thank God and I hope to well to help the Lord that I'm giving suck tonight. Amen. That I'm giving people the word of God. I'm giving them something to be nourished by, to grow by, so you can be as newborn babes as are in the sense of the word. That's why he told Peter, said, Feed my sheep and feed my lambs. He said, Because there was a work to do and there was people that need to care of. Amen. In the time we're living today, you think about this, how the parents have neglected their children. Amen. They want to take care of their own children. And most of the time, the grandparents are having to take care of the children now because the children won't take care of them. And I'll tell you what, that old crowd today is dying off. And the new crowd that's coming on in that so-called church world, they won't take care of the children either. Amen. And one of them days, or somebody's going to wind up in hell. But they're going to say, blessed. Yeah. Blessed. You know what? It's a blessing to take somebody out and baptize them. Yeah. I rejoice in that. Yeah. But you know what? If they're not living right, I don't rejoice. No. If they don't go on to live for God, I don't rejoice. No. Amen. Because they're bringing the Lord to an open chain, the Bible says. And crucified in the flesh, bring yeah. it to an open chain. Amen. It counted the very... Blood of the covenant where they were sanctified an unholy thing. Amen. You know what? I'll tell you what. I was in that number. I backed up on the Lord. Amen. I ran into a boy in the store the other day. And this boy was, his daddy was a preacher. Thank God for years and years. And, and he was at the cash register. It was over at Lowe's, Brother Johnny. And I was coming through it. And you know what? There's a big old crowd. It seemed like men. We stood in line, Brother Randy. Amen. The old devil, he'd like to get me aggravated. But I just stood there and I said, well, I'll get 
get through. If the Lord helps me, and if I don't, I'll just sit it down and go home. Amen. But I see I was there for a half hour or so if I to get through that line. And you know what? It all finally got down to where I was the last one and everybody was gone. And after I got up there and paid for myself, that boy said, he said, I'd like to ask you a question. Amen. He knew who I was. And, and I said, what is it, son? I, he said, well, he said, you know, he said, you know how people, how they get saved? And he said, and they backslide. And, and he said, and they, and they go out. He said, do you think they can get right with God? And I said, well, I sure do. I sure do. He said, well, he said, you know, he said, there's some preachers that say, are preaching this. If you get in, you only got one chance. And that's all you get. You ain't got no chance. He was a troubled young man. <laughs> he was standing there and I said, son, I, I said, God is a merciful God tonight. He's standing with his hand out. He wants you to serve him. And I told him, I said, you get in your Bible and you look up the sure mercies of David and you see how that they sinned. But God forgive them for their sin. And he opened up the door of mercy to them. And that door is still open. As long as there's life tonight. There's hope, thank God. I'm glad that I got the call to that young man. I hope he took those words home. He said, you know, when I go home, he said, I'm going to look it up in my Bible. I said, God, if there's hope for you tonight. Amen. You know what? I can tell him about hope because I got hope. Yeah. I was a backslider. God brought me back 30 some years ago and I'm still on the way. Yeah. Amen. When I first came, a lot of people said you'll never make it. Well, the devil says that about everybody. But I was with the help of God, I'm going to hang on. Amen. I never had nowhere else to go to. Amen. I don't got nowhere else to go now. I tell you what, if I don't obey the truth, I'm going to be lost. If you don't obey the truth tonight, you're going to be lost. You might be accepted by your family. You might go, you're, the crowd might like you and think you're a good person. But if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to stand before God short. I'm going where I'm, I'm getting there. When people get in this shape, when they come on down the road, verse 30 said, then, when, when this happens, when they say blessed is the barren and them that never gave suck, he said, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. Hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne. Oh, my heart is heavy for people because they're just playing around, playing around. Amen. And then the preachers is playing around. Amen. And they're not giving them no example. Thank God. I tell you what, do you think about this tonight? I've the thought of my own children. And I try, Brother Johnny, to get them to come to church. I try, I've tried to stand up for what's right. But they're going to stand before God, each and each, all of them. As much as I love them, they're still going to have to stand before God. And, I, and I'll tell you what, but I believe people can get in such a place. And when, they're, when they know that God is coming. And they're not ready to meet him. The Bible said they're going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them, to hide them from the faith. In other words, you'd rather die, thank God, and to face up, thank God. You know, Bob, he heard people say, well, I'm going to be cremated or I'm going to be burned up, thank God. And I'm just saying, you ain't going to get away from the devil. If you're trying to get away now, thank God, you ain't going to get away. People will take their own life and get in such turmoil, brother. Their mind is tormented and take their own life. But I'll tell you what, they're going to be accountable. Amen. The last thing they do is commit murder yeah. to kill their self. Yeah. Hey Amen. I want you to think about this. And that's the first thing when you get in trouble, that's the first thing the devil wants you to do. Yeah. Kill yourself. Thank yeah. God. That's come to me. When I was a sinner, I was so miserable. Hey Amen. It would come to my mind. So once you just kill yourself. Yeah. Hey Amen. But you know what? I'm glad that growing up as a young man and somebody teaching me about hell and about the devil, thank God I knew if I killed myself, I was going to be getting out of one mess into a worse one. And I'll tell you what, it's Sunday night because you're in a mess tonight. This world is a mess. And the only way we're going to get out of it tonight is if we're born again. And God leads us out, thank God. We're like the children was in in bondage in Egypt. It took God to bring them out, brother. He brought them across the Red Sea. I don't care how deep in sin you've been. I don't care how many troubles you've got. God is able to bring you out tonight and to set your feet 
you on a solid rock and feed you with manna from heaven and put clothes on your back and shoes on your feet. We can be shot up with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ tonight. Verse 31 says, For if, if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? He was showing us the beginning. The Lord Himself, Christ, He was the beginning. He was the green tree. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Everything that He said, except you abide in the vine, you can't have no life. You can't bring forth no life. Amen. But He said, if they'd do that to me in the beginning, if they did that to Jesus, how much worse is it going to be in our day? Yeah. You think about it. I mean, you think about the most terrible thing. There's people that's going to go to hell with their eyes wide open. Yeah. Amen. And not know. If the Bible said that in the book of Isaiah, I the 33rd chapter, it said the sinner, the sinners in Zion will be afraid yeah. and fearfulness will come upon them. Amen. Because if they're going to say, where is he, the receiver? And where is the he that counteth the tower? In other words, where's the one that took my tithes? Amen. Which one? Amen. Which one was leading me? Where was the one that showed me this was the way? Thank God. And how here I've come up short. Amen. Be so miserable. Thank God. Praying for the mountains to fall on me. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to be barren tonight. Yeah. Amen. I want to bring forth fruit. Yeah. Amen. I want our church to be bar- not barren tonight. I want us to bring forth fruit. Yeah. How many loves the Lord tonight? Yeah. All right. Let's go. I got one more place here in the book of Peter. Got to be born again, children. Amen. Got to be born again. Chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to start reading the 20th verse. Who verily was foreordained. Let's back up to 19. And he said, with the precious blood of Christ, as of the Lamb without blemish and without spot. In other words, he didn't sin a little bit every day. Amen. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world and was manifest in these last times for you. Amen. I'm just glad that the Lord's been made known to you. Amen. By who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory, and that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls. You know, you've got to do this. This is the work we got to do. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit to unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Listen. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Listen, thank God, for all flesh is grass. And all the glory of man is the flower of grass. And the grass withereth and the flower fadeth. And there will the fall of the way. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which the gospel is preaching to you. That's what I'm preaching to you tonight. Amen. We've got to do it God's way. Amen. And we're not going to be able to go. Amen. But I want you to go with me to 2 Peter. Amen. And we're going to read the first chapter here. God has made a way for us. And amen, I'm not preaching a new thing. But I'm going to tell you what, the old devil will say, you're all right. You'll be okay. You'll be all right. He'll get you to put off. Amen. But when you neglect, amen, you start getting cold. When you, I'll tell you what, I don't know. If you get to where you don't come to church, it gets easy not to go to church. And if you stay out a long time, maybe through a sickness or something, when you come back, it's hard to get yourself back in the place of coming back again. Because your old flesh has got used to it and it wants its way. But we cannot. We're born again. We need to bring forth fruit tonight. Verse 3. 
According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Listen. God has done this, given to us all things that pertain unto what? Life. And godliness. God's given us all these things. It's, it's for us to put them on. He said, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh. You've got to put it on. I love about the sister tonight. She, I'm, I'm glad that God chastened you, honey, because he was showing me he loved you. Yeah. Amen. You don't know how many times I've been in that place. Amen. Working on a job with a bunch of men and people carrying on. Amen. I'll tell you what, but God had given me a stillness in my heart. I was able to, I was able to hold my peace. I was able to, I could be stern, but I could do it without getting mad, without being hateful. Amen. There's a way to do everything. You know what? Even our children, and there's a way to correct people. Amen. And you you can kill people with kindness tonight. Amen. If you just show people you love them, you can make people be ashamed of themselves. All right. According as his divine power, not my power, his divine power, yeah. hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Here's how. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him, that's how we learn. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. God's given us promises tonight. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You want to be like Christ? You need the Holy Ghost. You need these things in your life. All right? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's what causes, that's what causes sin. When lust is seen to bring it forth sin. Listen, verse 5 said, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. God, I, I'll do it. It's hard to get that temperance. Amen. That's, that's what every one of us has got to work on that. Yeah. But you know what? The Bible said the Holy Ghost falleth not itself. It's not puffed up. That's what I'm saying. If we're led by the Spirit, we won't obey the lust of the flesh. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. And, and he said, in virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, it gives us what? Amen. Patience. <clears throat> Sister Frances told Brother Doug one time, she said, she said, I pray for patience. She said, but every time I pray for patience, she said, it seems like I have nothing but trouble. Yeah. Brother Doug told her, he said, honey, he said, the Bible said, tribulation worketh patience. Yeah. That's what gives you patience. You know, we read about Job and you say, oh, he's a man of patience. Well, he was, but he wasn't in the beginning. But after he had fulfilled what God had given him, he had patience. You're going to have patience if you walk with God. You're going to learn patience. You're going to know how to walk. And the, and the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us in this path tonight. Amen. And temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. we got to put on godliness. And listen to this. And, and to godliness, what? Brotherly, brotherly kindness. Amen. And to brotherly kindness, what? Charity. Charity. What the Bible says is a, it's perfect. Perfectness. People say this is love. No, it's love perfected. Amen. Charity, 13 chapter 1 Corinthians tells us what charity is. Amen. Now listen, verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound. In other words, if these things be in you and they abound. In other words, if they grow they make you that ye shall neither be what? Barren. barren. I don't want to be barren, do you? We need all these things so we won't be barren. Listen, he said, neither ye shall neither be barren, nor listen, unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. There's a knowledge of it. The Bible said that's what the five office ministry for the perfecting of the saints and, and bringing them to a, the, the more perfect man. It ain't that they know everything, but when we preach the word, amen, it draws us closer, amen. God can reveal things to us through the word, amen. But he that lacketh these things, these things that we're just read, he that lacketh these things is what? Blind. Blind. Remember the men at the door in Sodom? They brought after the angels. They sought them at the door. What happened to them? They said they stricken with blindness. 
You know, they said that they was wandering about, they couldn't see. That's why people, there's people in the church that's wandering around, they can't see. Because if your heart ain't right, God won't reveal things to you. Amen. If your heart ain't right, you're not going to make it tonight. If your heart ain't right, you can't get the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't just go along. You can't be in the parade tonight because there's only one way tonight. And he that lacketh these things is blind. And I can see, and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. But we don't want to forget what God's done for us, do we? Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For it, for if ye do these things, everybody shall never fall. Shall never fall. You ever worry about falling? I worry about falling. He said, He that thinketh he stand to take heed lest he fall. But he said, If we do all these things, if we're led by God in all these things, and we follow all these things, he said, We'll never fall. We'll never be barren. We'll never be unfruitful. We'll always be growing in the Lord. And the Lord said, The Lord hath long patience for the precious fruit of the earth. Like a tree grows, amen. This summer. <clears throat> We'll be long and the, and the apple trees, they'll start blooming. And June apple trees, you know, the, the little buds will start coming out of them. As long as the frost don't get them, amen, them old them little buds, they'll grow and they'll get brown. And when the petals fall off, there'll be little apples come upon them. And if we wait, brother, but thank God, until the time comes, when that time comes, that fruit, it's going to be able to be eaten. It's going to be able to be picked. It ain't going to be no good in May. Amen, because it's not going to be right. Amen, we might have fruit tonight, but it's not right. We need to be fruitful. We need to be, have right fruit. It takes good, It takes a lot of sunshine. It takes rain. It takes heat. It takes being pruned and purged. Amen, to bring forth fruit. A lot of things we'll go through to bring forth fruit. But if we can't bring forth fruit, do you remember the fig tree? And Jesus went all the way, and he desired a fig from it. And when he looked upon it, amen, there wasn't no figs. The Bible said he cursed it tree. Amen. And he went away and he came back. And his disciples recalled how quick the tree had withered. Do you know there wasn't no fruit on the tree? Amen. It's God's will. And what he said in the 17th chapter of John said God has ordained that we should bring forth fruit. We can't do it by ourselves. It takes the Lord. It takes the Holy Ghost, Brother Johnny, to help us bring forth fruit. We can't do it by ourselves. He said, I'm the vine. And you're the branches. Yeah. Amen. We're growing out of Him. If we don't abide in the vine, we can't bring forth fruit. Yeah. Amen. He said, He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Yeah. He that doeth not righteousness, he's not righteous. Amen. Amen. You say, Well, you're saying you're righteous. Yeah, I'm righteous in obeying God. If I there's any goodness about me, it's because I've obeyed God. And that's up yeah. what each and every one of us have to do. And tonight we need to start travailing in birth. Say, God, I need you. I want you to fill my life and fill my heart. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. You know what? It'll come. Amen. It'll come. Amen. It don't have to be on your knees. You can be standing up. You can be sitting. Amen. You can be going down the road. God can give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whenever you get to the place to receive it, He'll give it to you. Don't doubt the promises to you. It's to every one of us tonight. And you know what? If you get it, you need more of it. Need more. Remember how the disciples, the Bible said that they was beaten and how they come and they prayed, they gathered themselves together, and they began to pray. And the Bible said they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. Amen. And after that, said so they went away and spoke the word of God with boldness. Amen. God wants His church to, to so assemble together. He wants us to pray and to tarry and to labor, thank God, and travail with one another. Thank God that we can bring forth fruit. If we ask, He said, you'll receive. If you seek, He said, you'll find. If you knock, he said it would be open to you. God's promises are yea tonight. The only thing we have to do is we have to give up our life. We have to give up our old ways and our, what we want and we follow after God. And you know what? At the beginning sometimes things is hard to give up. But you know what? If you really want to live for God, you'll give them up. You'll give them up. They'll go away. They'll, they'll be because I'll tell you what, if there's something there and it ain't right, when you go to church, you'll be condemned. You'll yeah. feel it. 
You'll feel condemnation. That's why people know the, the devil don't want people to go to church. Because when they go to church, amen, when God's Spirit begins to work on everybody, we feel condemnation about things in our life. We feel conviction about things. Amen. But if we're never, we don't never hear about it, and if we're never around nobody, amen, then we won't have that conviction. That's why people are going on today and doing whatever they want to do. And living however they want to live. But you're not going to make it if you do that. Amen. Let's all stand here. Get us a song tonight.